decide who has the right of way. There is Stefano Cerioli, uh, the coach for the Russian Federation from Italy, and Andrea Cipressa, who took over from Cerioli after London 2012, sits in the box for Daniele Garozzo. So the fences are called on guard. And on the left of your screen, it is Timor Safin. On the right, it is Daniela Garozzo of Italy. Yeah, Garozzo has a, uh, a very classic, very upright on guard position. And it can keep the hand in a fairly classic position, but here you see he often has his blade kept high. Patient footwork and looks to find the blade if he does, he follows it up with a patient attack. His defense can be a little bit suspect to fast attacks, but uses holding parries to good effect. Meanwhile, Safin, uh, he, he has a slightly hunched over um, on guard position, but today he's been a little bit more upright, and he also likes to keep his sword quite far out of the way. Absolutely superb footwork from the Russian as well. And Garozzo getting off to an early lead. 2-0 up already now if you're new to fencing look for the colored lights that go on that determines whether the hit has been scored on target if you see a, a non-colored if you see a white light go on then that is an off target hit so when a green light comes on for Safin I'm just checking that so that the right way around the referee just uh, So Safin's red, Garozzo's green. So when Garozzo hits on target, uh, but they both they both recorded a hit on target. So now the referee has to establish who had the right of way, whose attack was it? Well, what we saw there, yeah, this is going to get a little bit technical, I have to say. Uh, but the master control, the master box is actually in the mask of the fencer. And then it repeats around the lights around the room. And Garozzo felt that his hit landed but it didn't come up straight away around the field of play, and indeed, Avila Mada has awarded the hit to Timor Safin. Have to keep an eye on that uh, green light for Garozzo to make sure it's uh, coming up uh, when it should. These guys have faced each other a couple of times in this Olympic cycle. Uh, the, uh, back in 2013 at the Seoul Grand Prix, they met in the pool stages and it was Safin who took a 5-2 victory and got to five hits in the early stages in the normal competitions. Uh, but more recently at the St. Petersburg Grand Prix in 2014, Garozzo handed uh, a, well, a defeat of a monumental size to Safin, beating him 15-4. Well, we've said that there's really nothing to choose between them. They, they share a birthday, 4th of August. Uh, they're now both 24 years old. Uh, they're very similar uh, in size and weight. Uh, world ranked number 11 and 12. In fact, they shared a coach as well because the coach of the Russian team, uh, Stefano Cerioni, used to coach the Italians and is an Italian. And the Russians, uh, well, they, they poached him, basically. Yeah, you can say that. Uh, the Russians have got a great national coaching setup. Uh, three when it comes to foil. Broken time attack from uh, Timor Safin. Uh, fails initially and then he hits the floor as he goes past. There is Stefano Cerioni. The rumours are to be believed. There is a rather large bonus awaiting Stefano Cerioni if he can pick up the gold medal here. So important for uh, the fencers, and of course the, the coaches have been working four years for, for this result as well. So we will see emotions run high in both boxes, and uh, more so that uh, the, both the coaches are Italian. They're known for their passion, aren't they, the Italians? Lots of re-establishing the lead there, they have a nice timed attack. 
So if you're new to fencing and you're just trying to get your, your head around the, the, the timings of it all, uh, the clock in the middle is ticking down. We have three three minute bouts. Uh, this is the, the first uh, session, the first section if you like. Uh, so there's three three minute sections to the bout. And uh, it's the first of 15 uh, that will win the actual fight. Yeah, the way that we're going, I don't think we're gonna see uh, all three of the three minutes. Four apiece, and just one minute gone. He's awarded that to the right. There was a question mark over that as Andrea Cipressa celebrates clapping his hands uh, for his charge, Daniele Garozzo. A little bit of a pause there. Sampin might have an argument. He does call for the video impact, as we see from the replay. Mm, this should be an interesting uh, decision coming back from the referee, Villa Mada. Sapin here. You see what I'm saying. And he has changed his mind, Villa Madder. Good call. Brave decision uh, from Sapin to call that one because it was tight, but it's gone in his favour. And he keeps uh, both of his video appeals and then scores a single light on the attack. Well, that means that Sapin will keep that video appeal. You only lose an appeal if uh, it's not successful. Now, is it a preparation this time from Safin and Garozzo jumps in in time. Little matter goes to the video of his own volition. There's a pause, a hesitation. Mm, I would be reluctant to call that either way. I wouldn't say Safin had established the right of way and I think they both went for it at the same time. Well, the referee doesn't have to call a point. He can call it as a simultaneous attack. There's no separation between the timing of the attack. Uh, I think that's what he has gone with because. Oh no. Yeah, he has. So no separation there. Italy, of course, superb in fencing at the Olympic Games. A total of 122 medals over the course of their Olympic history. Fencing has been in since the very start very first Olympics. Uh, in 1896 in Athens. Yeah, well here in 2016, we're seeing why this sport has been held onto by the Olympic family as Daniela Barozzo goes for a beat, disengage attack, and now he's stolen the lead from the Russian. What an amazing fight. And Garozzo, I think he's got to change that weapon. It's uh, a number of times he's hit, and you can see clearly that the weapon has bent in the hit. And so he has established contact with his opponent's target, but no light came up. So Timo Sapin scores an easy one on the counter. So seven apiece. And that's a point to the Italian. The Italian coaches, both of the coaches, Italian. Cipressa shouting, Forza, Forza, and Cerioni saying, he stopped, he stopped, and then he started again. Uh, but he didn't, the referee's given the hit to Garozzo. And despite his Italian heritage, Cerioni firmly in the Russian camp. Russian charge. Preparation from Sapin for me. That's an easy one for the referee to call. Daniele Garozzo goes two points up and it's all about the attack at the moment for both these fences. They're just going at it, aren't they? They're absolutely going at it. There's no, uh, there's, there's no uh, building to the point. They're just going straight in and attacking. It's almost like watching a Sabre match. Yeah, yeah, this is absolutely brilliant stuff and foil at its best. Garozzo getting the right of way again and I think both of them came into this knowing that they couldn't give the other one an advantage and that's why they're just taking the fight to each other. Brilliant stuff to watch. This could all be over in the first period. Well, men's spoil have been in the Olympic program since the very beginning. They did miss out one Olympiad and that was in 1908 uh, when Epe came in uh, and uh, replaced foil. Uh, but uh, yeah, 
27th Olympiad that Paul has been in this Games. Para crossed off target for me. And he's for Villa Madder as well. And, uh, crosses a piece of chewing gum he's going to need replacing after this semi final. Picks up the blade there in a high cream. And Once you've lost control of your weapon there, the referee has to really call halt. Whoa, Carrozzo! Just dominant. He's Look at that sword out of the way. Looking oh. for that counter attack. Does he get a pair of repost? Asking for a card. Asking to see whether it came off the side of the piece. Yeah. His opponent came off the side of the piece in the area that he's in. That could well constitute going over the back line when you have to give up a meter. Look, he's just outside of Where does he go off the piece? No, he goes off the piece. Uh, well inside, or outside of the warning area. Parry riposte. Is that a mal parry or a parry riposte? Does the attack go through? It does not. And Garozzo, like that, is just three hits away from winning this first semi final here in Karaoke 3. And he'll go on to contest the gold medal potentially. So Daniela Garozzo, 12. Seven up over Timo Safin. This is the first of three periods, but there's no way this is going to go the distance. Hard to call on that one. Yeah. Garotto's waiting and waiting and waiting. He's trying to lure the counter attack, but I'm not sure he established the right of way that time. I don't think he did. His hand is right back. Interested to see what the referee calls here. So clear instruction there from. Uh, from Cherioni, he's saying, do a bit of second tension, lure uh, Garozzo into thinking you're going to counter attack, then stop and do a parry riposte. Sounds simple. All point Garozzo. given to Garozzo. So Garozzo just two points away. Safin has got a mountain to climb, the fence has crossed. Safin loses control of his weapon, it will be reset. This boy place in the final. This for a guaranteed medal. The loser will have to fight it out for bronze. Daniela Garozzo is in the box seat. A patient attack from the Italian. Oh, he's, got it. he's got that one. He's flown I, away. I think that one went straight through. Timor Safin. He has got to think about going forwards here. The attack from Daniele Garozzo is just too potent tonight. Well, Garozzo coming into these games was a lot of people's favourite. He's not uh, ranked particularly highly, but he's been fencing so well this season. So one more hit for the Italian. We'll see him through to the final. Referee just testing the tip of Garozzo's foil. Well, you often say that the 15th hit is the hardest. The way Garozzo is fencing at the moment, I think he's going to keep on the tactic of going at his opponent, but Safin's got to come after him. He really goes forward with his, his, his blade held back out of the way, and then lightning fast brings it in, and that is it! Garozzo's got it! He's booked his place in the final! Italy will win another Olympic medal to add to their massive haul in this sport. Daniela Garozzo sees off Timor Safin, who will have to go and fight it out for bronze.